Hey guys, let's get straight to the point. Before we start editing the photo, I want to talk about the camera that you should be using if you want to turn your digital photos into more of like a disposable photo film like look. Um, I highly recommend you guys to look for cameras with a lower megapixel. I have the Canon A560. This is a digital camera, a digicam with a CCD sensor. Um, I don't think it really matters if it's like a CCD or a CMOS sensor, but the older the camera, the better because the lower the megapixel it is because a lot of disposable cameras, the film that they use and the quality of the lens, they're like usually plastic lenses. So they have a really low quality, low megapixel, really grainy look. So in order to create or recreate the disposable film look, I highly recommend getting a lower mega megapixel camera and that will help you to emphasize that not super sharp and 3D popping kind of look. Also, the smaller the sensor, the better because if you're using a full frame camera, you will have this 3D cutout or like a popping effect if you have a faster lens, let's say a f1.8 or even f1.4, 1.2 lens then you will be popping the subject out too much from the background. It will get super blurry. A lot of disposable cameras, they have an f-stop of like 5.6, f8, f11, super high aperture. So they will have most of the stuff in the frame in focus. That's why they look like disposable camera film. Um, so if you're interested, I will put some Digicam in the description below. I don't think they sell them new anymore. So I'll try my best to put some links in the description below. If not, then you can definitely go onto eBay. You don't have to buy anything super expensive. This, I found it in a local camera store for like $30, including SD card and also the AA batteries. It's pretty much like just $40, $50 max. So try not to spend too much on it. And also because of another reason that the Digicam will sell the disposable look even better than a modern day camera is it has a built-in flash. This is super important. With the disposable cameras you have seen probably in like um, a, a supermarket or like any kind of store that sells a disposable camera with the, the package, when you open it, it has a built-in flash. And a lot of times you cannot control the built-in flash. So most of the time when you take a photo with a disposable camera, the flash will just go off no matter what, even if it's like bright daylight. So that's how you can make the look even more like disposable film by using the flash. I highly recommend using the flash on a Digicam with a small CCD sensor because it will make the picture much nicer and your subject will be much nicely um, exposed compared to a really grainy, noisy digital photo. I use the flash most of the time with this camera when I'm using this camera and it got me a lot of really amazing photos that I can use to edit. So highly recommend getting a low megapixel digicam and with flash and use the flash only if you can. <laughs> Try not to use flash if you're not um, allowed to. So that's the setup for the camera. Now let's jump straight into the phone uh, Snapseed app. I'll show you guys how I edit digital photos and turn them into disposable photos. All right, so now we're on an iPhone with the Snapseed app open. All the photos are just JPEG straight out of the camera that I just mentioned. Um, nothing in RAW. Of course, you can edit your photos in RAW, but I try not to spend too much time editing RAW photos. And also the Canon colors are really good coming out of the uh, Digicams anyway. So I am just editing JPEG. Um, I always try to get the look in camera instead of relying on RAW. So that's just a habit. But here's a photo of my friend. Uh, we were at a uh, dance performance and I was using the flash as you can see. So the subject, which is my friend, is really nicely exposed and the background is of course darker. That's just the look of using an on-camera flash. And with disposable photos or disposable cameras, you will get this look most of the time because in a dark, especially in a dark environment, the flash will go off for sure. And the flash is usually really harsh. And in this photo, you can see that the colors are pretty good already and I don't have to worry about the skin tone color, especially if you're getting a 
a Canon camera or like a Fujifilm camera or Olympus cameras, they're usually pretty good at it, uh, showing nice skin tone colors. I don't have to worry about that. Um, if you're using Sony cameras, maybe you have to play around with the yellows and the greens to make the skin tone look a little bit more natural. But in this photo, it looks really natural already. I actually have everything saved as the preset. You can just copy all the settings. I don't sell preset, at least at this moment, I'm not selling any presets. So don't worry, you can just copy the settings. We will just um, go through all the settings that I have. I have the preset saved under a camera name, so I know what kind of preset I should apply on whenever I use a specific camera. So this is a Canon A560 camera, and underneath the, I don't like Snapseed where you can't really fit the whole name in there, but it's actually the one at the bottom left, the second one. This is the preset. This is the look that I've created to make a digital photo look a little bit more like a disposable film photo. As you can see, don't worry about the white border, that's up to you. You don't have to add the white border. I just like having a white border to like pop the photo out a little bit more. And plus in the past when I was still developing film photos when I was little, they have an option of choosing a white border so that reminds me of that. So I'll show you the before. This is before and this is after. I absolutely love this effect. So if I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that the skin tone and the hair color is super nice and super natural. And also the contrast is higher, the saturation is higher. And you can tell that this is before and this is after. So now let's go into all the steps. If I tap onto the check part, uh, check mark at the bottom right, it will apply the preset. And if you tap onto the square with the arrow at the top right corner, you will have the ability to view edits, which is all the layers that I've created. Once I tap onto that, you, you can see that all the layers are there. If I tap onto original at the bottom, it will turn off all the layers. The reason why I have so many layers is just the same as when I'm color grading, I tend to have all the adjustments in separate layers so I can turn them individually off and I can adjust them individually without affecting the other ones. Maybe I want to reset the whole layer and I don't want to reset some of the settings, then if I mix them up, then I cannot do that. So this is the original photo. The first thing that I have added is tune image. All the tools, by the way, if I tap onto the arrow, backwards, all the tools within Snapseed is under the tab tools at the bottom. You will find everything. So tune image is top left. So if you are not familiar with Snapseed, definitely take a look at this page first, and then you will find the settings that I'm gonna mention. I'm just gonna open up the layers again. So the first thing that I've adjusted is tune image. What happened is this option, if I tap onto the uh, adjustment icon, I have all these brightness, contrast, saturation, ambience, highlights, shadows, and warmth. I am only adjusting two um, adjustments here, but I will also talk about another one uh, after we try to apply this uh, preset to another photo. So with highlights, I try to turn highlights down to pull some of the details back from the brightest part of the image. That's why it's negative 37, and I want to lift some of the information from the shadows. So I have shadow set to plus 50. Of course, this is up to you. Uh, depends on the camera settings that you have. You might have to adjust these numbers accordingly, but this is the pattern. So this is after the adjustments. This is before. You can tell that the shadows part is really lift, uh, lifted, and then the highlights, which is the um, brightest part of the image, gets pull down in order to create this flat look. So with this tune image, I want to create a flat image. So after that, I can tap onto the check mark. Again, you can copy all the settings. You can do it exactly the same. I'll show you guys the settings again. If you have the exact same camera. The next one I have is curse. This one is for you to add in contrast and also um, adding in colors and highlights, shadows, or midtones uh, of the image. So the first one is basically a contrast curve that I've created. I can tap onto the gear or the adjustment icon, 
you can see that this is a simple S curve. If I tap onto the circle at the bottom left, you can tell that I have RGB selected. The other colors that I'm tapping on right now, even luminance, I did not touch them. I am only adjusting RGB curve on this layer right here. And it's an S curve, basically the highlight part, it's lifted and then the shadow, it's pushed down again. And the mid-tone, um, the middle point, it's for you to anchor your mid-tone so it doesn't like follow the highlights and shadows too much. So this is a super simple S curve. You can just copy it and I can tap onto the image to show you the before. This is the flat image that we just created using tune image and this is with the contrast S curve. You can tap onto the check mark. This is the second adjustment. The third one is also a curve. You can tell that after I tap onto it, you can see some red in a really obvious part of the image, right? This is before, this is after the second curve. This is actually a color curve that I use. If I tap onto the circle at the bottom left, you can see that this is a red curve. What happened is within this red curve, I have the ability to lower the red color level on the shadows, mid-tone highlights. Again, this is an S curve. So I am basically lifting, if you uh, look at the top right point, the second one uh, from the top, I am lifting the red or adding red into the highlights part of the image. That is because when I look at a lot of disposable photos, I notice that there is some red magenta tint on the highlights part. Um, it really depends on the camera, the film, and also of course the, the design of the lens and everything, although they're plas uh, plastic. It will have a color cast, even with the flash. Sometimes the flash has a color cast, but most of the disposable cameras that I've seen or the photos that I've seen has a red tint in the highlights. That's why I added some red at the highlights. Mid-tone, again, the middle point, I just use it as an anchor so the mid-tone doesn't get affected too much because if you affect the mid-tone with colors, it will start um, looking like really weird. Shadows, I actually lower the red. So what happens when you lower the red on an image is the green will start coming up. So with this adjustment, basically I am adding in some greens. If I pull the point lower, you can tell that the shadow is showing a lot more greens. This is too extreme, so that's why I had it somewhere there. Highlight, same thing before adding the red. It doesn't have any kind of red in the highlight. It's kind of pale. If I add in some red, it will look something like this. So that way it will look more like a disposable film and also adding red in the highlights and a little bit on the mid-tone will make um, someone's skin look nicer and healthier because red, like, I mean, skin has a red tone. So that's the second curve. And the third one is also a curve, but an other color curve. You can see that this is before, this is after. I've added some yellow. So that's, a, that's another tint that I see all the time on disposable photos. With disposable photos, they tend to have this like yellow, ugly kind of color on like highlights and the entire image basically. So that's why I added this curve. If I tap onto the adjustment, you can tell that this is a blue channel curve. I have the mid-tone kind of in the middle, not mid-tone, but then the entire curve, it's curving downward by pulling the midpoint down. That adds yellow to the entire image. The reason why I didn't create like a curve or like, uh, not a curve, but an S curve or anything like that, I didn't use any anchor point is because I want this to be a smoother transition. In order to have a smoother transition, I have to make sure that the curve is just like super smooth. So that's why I'm just pulling down one point. If I uh, pull that point back up, you can see that it's red. If I pull it back down, you can see that I'm adding this like yellow orangey kind of tone because I am lowering the blue on the image entirely. But of course, more in the mid tone, but less on the highlights and shadow. So that's how I create this kind of color tone. We're almost done. The next one is quite interesting. It's completely up to you. Some people don't like digital grain or like digital film grain because they look not film grain-like. Um, but I like it. It adds 
a little bit more texture to the image, but I don't use a lot of like creative filters or creative like grain filter or presets on uh, Snapseed. I have a really simple setting. If I tap onto this, you can see that I'm adding some texture onto the image. It's not like super obvious, but it's there. I'm adding extra grain on top. The reason why it's not too obvious is because I'm going to show you right now. I'm using just the basic A01 grain in Snapseed all the time because I don't like the creative one. They add like colors and everything onto the image. So this is just a basic A01 grain and I have it set to grain plus 20 because the more you put in the grain, the more it looks fake almost. So don't overdo it. At least I don't like overdoing it. So I have it set to plus 20. It's really subtle, but people can still see the grain. And then if you push upward, you see that there's a style strength and it's set to zero because as I said, I don't like the style of the grain. Like depends, depends. Sometimes I, I like having it there, but if I push it, you can see that the contrast and the saturation is pushed without like me like wanting them to be pushed. So I have style strength set to zero and grain plus 20. This is how I create this film look. This is basically how I would edit my digital photos and turn them into more like a disposable film look. Uh, with the flash, it sells it even better. Uh, and the last step is just the white border. It's completely up to you. You don't have to do it. I think it looks great just like this. But if you want, you can add in a frame. Um, it's under frames and uh, my frame is just the basic number one frame with a plus 10 of a border because the more you create, uh, the more you push to the right, it's going to be thicker. The more you push to the left, it's going to be thinner. I just leave it at 10. Um, I like the white border, but then of course, sometimes if your photo is already too tight, you have a white border, you're cutting off some stuff. So it's up to you. So this is how I edit the photos to turn them into more of a uh, disposable look. And of course, if you tap onto the looks at the bottom left, you have the ability to tap onto the plus sign on the right to save it as a preset. As I said, copy all the settings. I'm not selling presets. Just copy them, try with your digital photos and let me know how it goes. And let me know if they actually turn your photos into more of like a disposable film look. So now I'm going to put this preset on some other photos to show you how it look with our flash or if it's like too dark and stuff like that. Stick around if you want to. If not, you can go ahead and go back and copy all the settings. So I'm going to open up another photo now. Oh, before I open another photo, I'm going to show you the before and after one more time. This is before the editing straight out of the camera JPEG from the Canon A560 Digicam with CCD sensor 7.1 megapixel, I think. And then this is after the editing. Now let's open another photo. All right. The second photo that I have just opened is also a flash photo that I took with this camera, same camera, but at the different location, different settings, um, uh, same camera settings, but the, the location is different. I'm just going to tap onto the preset and that's it. This is after the preset that we just mentioned or talked about. This is before this is after. I really like this look. The red in the highlights is really, really making it look much nicer. Before I did not add, add the red at the, in the highlights. I only pulled down the red in the shadows, but then having the red in the highlight really, really makes this photo look even older. <laughs> so that's the second photo. Now I'm going to open up some non-flash photo and show you guys how the preset is going to affect the non-flash photo. Actually, they look pretty nice too. All right. So this is another photo with the same camera taken on the street in downtown Vancouver. It looks pretty cool already. Straight out of the camera, JPEG, not super contrasty and saturated. So that's how I like the JPEG. I can actually make them like pretty flat in camera already. So let's try to apply the same preset on there. It looks really good, to be honest with you. I, I was just surprised when I first applied this preset onto my non-flash photos. They look nice, like the colors are pretty good. I'm a colorist for like videography. 
So I really, really like this color contrast and tones and everything. It makes it look like a, I don't know, like a film photo at least like to me. So this is before, this is after. I'm gonna show you a couple more photos. All right, this one, surprisingly, it's still with the same camera, but I have it zoomed all the way in. It has a zoom lens, so it's pretty cool. Actually, I was shocked at like how good the photo turned out when it's zoomed in. Um, it's still really, really sharp. This is before applying the preset. Now I'm gonna apply the preset onto it. It looks really nice to me. Um, digital cameras with CCD sensor, the best part is the colors. You can see that the blue sky, it's super deep. Like the blue, it's super nice. The red is super nice. This is after the preset being applied. This is before, after. It looks really cool. I know this is not exactly like a film photo, but it has a nice style that I really enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna show you one more photo and that's it. Okay, so this is another photo that I was using the flash when I was taking the photo. And if I apply the preset, you'll know um, why I said I will do another extra adjustment, depends on the photo. If I apply the preset, you can tell that it's super contrasty. Um, it's too saturated and contrasty. I feel like it's too underexposed, so it's too dark. But I will still apply the preset on there and I'll tap onto the square with the arrow at the top right. And I'll go to a few edits and I'll tap onto tune image at the bottom tap onto the adjustment. I will actually adjust the first item on the list, which is brightness. I will usually add in about like 50, like plus 50. It looks super flat and kind of overexposed because this is just the first layer of adjustments. I will tap onto frames. That's the last one. And you can tell that it's much nicer than before. It's not super contrasty or underexposed anymore and it actually looks really nice so if you apply the preset that i just showed you guys and the picture look too contrasty or too saturated too dark go into the tune image layer and increase the brightness to your liking i usually just try like plus 50 that's usually how like it should fix the problem and this is before the adjustment this is after the preset with plus 50 on the brightness. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like this is just a really casual, I just want to share with you how I adjust the images to make them look like disposable film photos because I don't want to buy film or disposable film cameras just to take these photos because I don't think it's good for the environment and also it's gonna cost like a lot of money. Usually a disposable camera can cost I don't know, twenty dollars. Oh, maybe not twenty. Maybe ten or fifteen dollars, including the film. And then you have to develop the film, and you have to wait and everything. It's fun. It's super fun. Don't get me wrong. It's super fun. Definitely do that. But then for me, if I can turn this tiny little thirty dollars digital cameras photos into a disposable photo look, kind of. This is close enough. To be honest with you, I'm really happy with the result using this camera and Snapseed on my phone and create these photos. All my friends love those photos. They think that they look really nostalgic, really like old vintage film look that reminds them of like the high school year and like when they were young, when disposable cameras were still really, really popular. So I'm really happy with this result. Let me know how it goes using this preset on your digital photos. If you have some results that you want to share with me, definitely let me know. You can connect me, uh, connect with me on Instagram. And uh, if you want, or if you like these kind of tutorials, let me know in the comment section below as well. I would love to make more videos like these for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.